Hey guys, I'm Minard Siren, and today we are going to be reading another chapter of the glorious Supernatural Fanatic 19 story, Love Kills. Now, this story is a Jeff the Killer fanfiction, so as it was the last chapter, the expectations are pretty high. But, as with last chapter, I have a very amazing guest narrator with me today. Hey guys and girls, Necker Run here, and once again I'm over here helping Siren out with her little story. So without further ado, we're just going to start reading Chapter 2 of Love Kills. I felt stiff and sore as I began to come to. I groaned softly, moving my fingers a bit. I felt a soft sensation underneath my aching body, and I finally forced my eyes open. From what I could tell, I it was just beginning just the beginning of dawn. I glanced over to the side, blinking a bit, as the young nurse looked at me. She smiled softly. Welcome back to the land of the living. How do you feel? <sighs> like, I was run over by Optimus Prime. I groaned, sighing. <laughs> How long was I out? <laughs> 28 hours. She replied. I will be right back with the doctor. When she left, I groaned as I slowly sat up. My shoulder and side throbbed in pain, and I glanced over, seeing a mirror next to me. I picked it up and looked at my face, seeing that long but thin cut on my face. It was hurting just a little, but the pain was tolerable. I sighed softly and put the mirror down, seeing bandages wrapped around my left shoulder and around my side. I leaned back against the pillows as the doctor walked in. Oh, hi there, miss. How are you feeling? Oh, hi, miss! <laughs> oh. Oh, hi, Lisa. <laughs> You're tearing me apart, Lisa. Shell! Oh, Sorry. wow. That sounded more Italian. <laughs> hey, I was just trying. Close enough. He asked as he came around to look at the clipboard. Really sore. What happened? Well, a lady brought you in, nearly dead from blood loss and severe hypothermia. Can you explain to me what happened? I explained to Mario about what happened. <laughs> hey, Mario was a doctor at one point. <laughs> I know, right? But I didn't mention Jeff's name or what he looked like. So I kicked him in the face, got out of the lake, and then walked away once the knife was out of my side. Hmm. You were very fortunate to walk away from a, such a dangerous person. The doctor spoke and I just snorted. <laughs> I just got lucky. I'm pretty sure it's the same guy who killed the people near the edge of the lake. <laughs> <laughs> I actually wasn't expecting that one. <laughs> yes, that's what most of us believe also. The doctor nodded in agreement. Well, are you hungry? Starving. What would you like? I told the doctor I wanted shiny. <laughs> <laughs> what would you like? <laughs> oh. I told the doctor I wanted Chinese from Dragon's Express, a quart of chicken fried rice, and a quart of chow mein. About a half an hour later, I got my food like I wanted and ended up watching TV or sleeping most of the time because of the painkillers. I still don't understand how how um how hospitals just get you takeout. I mean, usually you gotta eat that nasty hospital food. Yeah, really. I mean, this doctor, like, he, he must have been going to get some spaghetti or something, and <laughs> then just decided to be like, yeah, I'll go buy a Dragon Express. It's on the way, man. Yeah, Except exactly. Except done with an Italian accent. <laughs> it's on the way to Dragon Express. I'll, I'll get you some Chinese food. <laughs> Chinese food. Chinese food. <laughs> <laughs> Or, or, you know, Dragon Express could deliver. <laughs> I choose you, Spirit Dragon. I choose you, <laughs> Spirit Dragon. <laughs> um, midnight came along and there were only a couple nurses on my floor. Along with a couple other patients and then me. Right now, I was more in half awake, half asleep state. You know, I was in, I was in a wake world, but not quite in a wake world. Not completely asleep, but still aware of my surroundings a bit. I was on the right side, sleeping, facing mm. the window, and making sure not to... 
Don't die. Don't die. Not to put too much pressure on my injured places. Kinky. I could hear the faint <laughs> be the beeping of the heart monitor, which Boy. was which was about Boy. it. Boy. <laughs> Why does the beeping have a southern accent? <laughs> Beep. It sounds like Bill Cosby Beep. from. Oh my god, it does! It sounds like Bill Cosby from Family Guy, the Bill Cosby heart monitor. Boy! <laughs> <laughs> I shifted my position and rolled onto my back, breathing softly, and I thought I heard a clatter, but I decided to ignore it and turned my head so it was facing the other way. I suddenly felt a cold draft and shivered, pulling the blanket closer to me. I was now aware of another presence in the room. I could feel them getting closer, and I slowly curled around my fingers around the pen underneath the blanket. I heard a metal-like noise, and the presence was now right beside my bed. I had one chance. I shot up quickly, my hazel eyes opening in the blink of an eye, and clutched the pen as I tried to stab the person next to me, only to open my eyes and see that it was a poor defense nurse coming to fluff my pillow. I had made a terrible mistake, and now blood was on my hands. I had to escape quickly, get out of the hospital before I was going to be thrown in jail for murder. Damn. <laughs> hey, I, I I bullshitted that line without breaking character once. You, you did. That was impressive. Thank Holy you. Hell. I appreciate it. <laughs> I I was sitting there and I was trying not to laugh because I knew you were going off script, but it was so enthralling. <laughs> Why, I was like, God, she's not even breaking character. Why, thank you. But a hand quickly snatched my wrist in a vice grip, and I was pinned down to the bed as a heavy weight got onto the bed and hovered over me, the other hand oh, covering my you. mouth. Jeff smirked. Did you really think I wouldn't find you? It takes a lot more to kill me than freezing water. I glared at him harshly, realizing I, I had a flip. free hand. I curled it into a fist and punched him in the cheek. He grimaced a little, but then snarled and quickly snatched both wrists in one hand and pinned them above my head while keeping the one on my mouth. You gonna scream? I shook my head. What was the point of screaming, anyway? Over Ratch Punch removed his hand from my mouth and grabbed his knife from beside me, pressing the cold blade to my pale cheek. I'll say this. You have E for trying to drown me. Good idea, but too bad it didn't work. Too bad it didn't, I mumbled, and he traced e. the blade along my jawline, causing a thin line to appear on my skin. I didn't wince, and he let it oh rest God. beside my shoulder as his hand went to my waist. The hospital gown I was wearing bunched up at my waist, and yes, I wore pants, you fucking pervs, and lifted the garment because up, his fingers pressing into my injured out, side. I still had options. Exactly. You, when you're this glamorous, you always have options for what you're going to wear. I cringed a little bit, but otherwise didn't make any noises. He grabbed his knife and freed my hands, roughly grabbing my chin that with that hand, forcing me to look at him. You should be begging for your life, girl. Except you're just laying here. He hissed angrily. I don't get you. What's about me to get? I'm 19, live by myself, and am a beginning writer and hardly have any friends. I'm simply pathetic, and that's why I'm writing a Jeff the Killer fanfiction. See? Simple as that. I spoke in a somewhat annoyed voice. You're not a fangirl, and you aren't scared. He growled and suddenly thrusted the knife into the pillow next to my head. That would have been your forehead. Then just kill me if you want me dead this bad. I glowered at him. He was about to speak, but we both heard footsteps coming from the hallway. He growled and yanked his knife out of the pillow, then got off the hospital bed and jumped out the window. Um. I sighed softly and watched as a nurse came in. You okay, sweetie? What happened to your face? I scratched myself in my sleep, I lied. I was in the hospital for another day, and the doctor finally allowed me to go home, releasing me and giving me a list of prescription medicine I needed for the pain. Once I got home, I immediately ate some food and then went ahead and crawled into my warm bed, falling asleep. I woke up and heard a clatter coming from the kitchen downstairs. I grabbed the bat beside my bed and quietly got out of bed, 
going down oh my god my cat's making a lot of noise in the sorry going downstairs as quietly as I could I saw a light in the kitchen the fridge was open as quickly as I could I switched the light on and the person reading my fridge whirled around a can of Pepsi in his hand I recognized that torn smile and the bloodied white sweatshirt I blinked Jeff I questioned yeah he questioned back looking quite annoyed how the hell did you get into my house? I made sure I locked all the windows and doors. He pointed to the basement door. One of the windows in the basement was unlocked. He smirked at my shocked reaction. Son of a bitch, I muttered, lowering the bat. I sighed, rubbing my tired eyes. It's... I glanced over to the microwave. It's two in the morning. Why are you in my house? I haven't eaten in two days. Well... Being a serial killer, I bet you're always on the run. I grumbled and set the bat next to the basement door. Thanks for almost giving me a heart attack. You're welcome. He said sarcastically, smirking and turned back to my fridge. Two seconds later, he turned back to me. You're out of food. I was stunned for a moment, but when I checked the whole kitchen, he was right. I was out of food. I flustered a bit when my stomach grumbled in response to the lack of food in the house. I sighed. It's two in the morning. Your point? He asked me, now sitting at the table. I wondered where his knife was, and it was probably hidden in the pocket of his sweatshirt or up his ass. <laughs> sweatshorts. <laughs> sweatshorts. I glared at him harshly and groaned as my stomach grumbled louder. Whatever. I'll be back in an hour or two. I dressed warmly and headed out to Walmart. Good thing it was open 24-7. I basically was in the store for an hour and a half, grabbing whatever was on the sofa, or that I liked. <laughs> <laughs> I just did so much. <laughs> it took me like five seconds to realize it. I was just grabbing whatever was on the sofa. <laughs> Jeff better not be picky. By the time I got home, I was in a lot of pain from my injuries. I took the bags in and immediately popped in my medication, sitting down for a few to let the painkillers take effect. I sighed once they finally did and then put the food away, making up a, pa a ha package of hamburger helper. I ignored Jeff most of the time after, and after eating, I cleaned up and went back to bed, falling asleep about ten minutes later. Strangely, when I woke up, I felt a warm body pressed up against my back. I opened my eyes and lifted up the covers, seeing a sleeve-covered arm lying across my waist. I scowled and tried to shimmy out of his grip, then yelped when his free arm came around from underneath my side and pinned me to his chest. Not surprisingly, he was warm. "'Son of a bitch!' I whispered angrily to myself, growling. Thankfully, his hand hadn't landed on my shoulder. I sighed in an annoyed deep tone, trying to squeeze my way out of overratched putt desire. <laughs> I was also wondering where that deep tone came from. I was trying to make it sound like it belonged in a porn, okay? Yeah, you got there. I noticed that he had a somewhat wet cloth over his eyelid, less eyes, probably to help him sleep. Finally, after about an hour... It, <laughs> About an hour of squeezing my slightly smaller body out of his grip, I quietly tiptoed out of the room and went downstairs. I blinked to myself as I glanced out the window, seeing rays of sunshine come through the blinds. Sunshine. Sunshine. <sighs> I'm housing a serial killer. Sunshine. The end. That's it. Sunshine. <laughs> the end? That's it. That's the end of the chapter. Yeah, nope. That's the end of the story. Bye, everybody. <laughs> See you never. What? <laughs> um, but, um, I'm, can you imagine how bad that would suck to, like, have no eyelids and try to sleep? Well, then that dumb fuck shouldn't have cut him off. Didn't he? I thought he'd burn him off. Whatever, same thing. No, I, I really don't remember. I, th I think you're right. I think he burned him off. But yeah, I mean, he's the one that did it. But you know, to be honest, if you, like didn't have eyelids your eye you would go blind because your eyes would get so irritated and like damaged that you would just pretty much lose your sight because that's their whole purpose so yeah you have a great point that's well um if jeff the killer couldn't be more imaginary that just like put a stake through his chest pretty much <laughs>
Or so was I in that case. Or in his Ow, butt. Oh god. But... Stop being kinky over there. Whoa. <laughs> now I'm imagining Jeff the Killer in sweatshorts. Oh, that sounds really gorge. I'm just saying. Oh, we gotta read the reviews. I almost forgot about that. Oh, okay. Now we're going to oh be my reading God, there's reviews eight, there's for chapter reviews. two. Yeah, I know. We're just reading the ones from chapter two, though, so don't panic. But I wanted to read all eighty. All right, now, now my special guest is going to be reading chapter two's reviews. Go ahead, special guest. I feel so special. Oh, which one? <laughs> You're not going to say it sounds like top. Dick Lover again, are you? You're the one that said Dick Lover, okay? Not me. I said Fick Lover. You said Dick. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I wish I was her. I wish... Oh, wait, what? No, what? I would English. I know. Oh, I wish I was her. I would have stayed in that bed with him. I bet you would have, you freaking fangirl. From Fick Lover. <clears throat> Zoe, no. Sorry. Bad Zoe. Um, nice stuff. Load right here. It, it's I glance over at the microwave. It's two in the morning. I don't know. I I'm reading your part here. I know that she probably looked at the clock, but in the microwave, built in the microwave. But anyway, keep it up from anonymous. That's not how you spell anonymous. Anonymous. Oh my god. You fell at and you you fell at anonymity. And I mean, I can't English. I fell at English. He fell. Hey, at it English stripes too. the tiger again. My spirit animal's back. You want to read that one? Well, you're screwed. So Jeff, you are a serial killer who has a major bloodlust, and you just broke into some girl's house who almost killed you. And your first thought is eating. Ugh, couldn't blame the guy. Ah, oh, Jeff, do you like her? So much for Ruthless Killer. Any shoe. Update soon. <laughs> it literally says any shoe. I didn't misspeak. I know. Uh, that's. I'm going to use that from now on. So, I know. Any so, shoe. No, I'm going to say any shoe. Okay. Um, well, that just happened. Can't wait for chapter three. Kitty face. From Shadowcat98. Me and you both, Shadowcat98. Me and you both. <laughs> Let's take turns. You get this one. Jeff, you whore. XDDDDDD. From Mamuzel Kitty Cat. Why is everyone cat themed in this? A Neko. <laughs> review area. OMFG. That would be creepy if he didn't have the cloth. XXXD. Yeah, there was definitely a lot of XXXD in this. By ah, is that pooch? Putch? Putch? Ah, putch? Ah, ah, putch, senpai. Lol, okay. she finally realizes she's housing a serial killer when she goes downstairs. Did that not occur when she first woke up or when she didn't completely go batshit crazy when she found Jeff casually drinking a Pepsi in her fridge? I know, I would have beat him down if I saw him drinking my Pepsi. Because you gotta protect that precious ass Pepsi, <laughs> homie. You don't fuck with someone else's Pepsi, ever. Awesome chapter, and I hope you update soon. It really was a pleasure to read from The Hearts Tourniquet. Anyway, guys, I hope you enjoyed this horribly amazing chapter of um, Love Kills. And our nonsensical rambling that I may or may not cut off. If I do cut it off, I want you guys to know that I will probably also be uploading a like blooper-ish version of this that we also recorded. But it came out where we kind of just laughed through the entire thing. So I might just tack in some of this stuff on there that didn't fit on here because I don't want this to be 40 minutes long. Um, but anyway, I'm a Night Siren. And I'm Necker Run. And we will see you guys next time. Ye. Yeah. Yeah.